When you're starting out hand tool woodworking, you're going to focus on the essentials. A couple of planes, a couple of saws, a set of chisels. And if somebody starts talking to you about a plow plane, you're going to say, no, 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 hold on. I'll get into those special purpose tools once I've got the basics covered. Well, believe it or not, this complicated looking thing actually is one of the basics. And you might need one a lot sooner than you think. You might need one right now. Plow planes make grooves, narrow channels along the grain in a board. If you don't get why this matters, consider the basic drawer. New woodworkers mostly worry about cutting the dovetail that joins the corners, but that drawer isn't going to hold anything unless you get the bottom in there somehow. If you're building from solid wood, you can't glue the bottom on. As the drawer moves with the seasons, it would break that glue joint right away. Let's flip that drawer over to see how it's done. The bottom is nailed at the back but it's actually sitting in a shallow groove. You can see it right here in the corner. That groove goes along both sides and the front of the drawer, giving the bottom full support all around. At the rear, the bottom is nailed in place, which keeps it from sliding out of that groove. This construction lets the drawer hold a lot of weight, while all of those separate pieces can shrink and swell with the seasons. Now, I know, drawers might seem a little bit advanced, but I bet you're going to want to build something with a door at some point, like a cabinet or a cupboard. I've made a bunch of furniture with doors, but I've mostly used this board and batten style. It's durable and sturdy, but it's also chunky and kind of unrefined. If you want a lighter door, this style will not work. To build a slender door that's still strong, you'll need to learn frame and panel construction. In this style, a thin wooden panel fits into a grooved frame that's joined at the corners with mortise and tenon joints. The woodwork holds that panel flat while allowing it to move with the seasons. With this sophisticated construction, doors can be much lighter and more graceful while still being strong and stable. Really well-constructed pieces usually use panels captured in grooves, and you can use this technique to make way more than just doors. This blanket chest is made entirely of panels, held in a framework. That's the whole thing. And this isn't some fussy piece of art furniture. If we look at the lid, we can see how the edges of those panels have been quickly beveled with a plane to fit in their grooves. This piece was built efficiently, maybe even quickly, but it's over 300 years old and still going strong. Maybe you'd like to build furniture in this style. I know I would. But you can't do it until you can make grooves. Now, if you only have one or two projects to do, you can build a grooving plane. I've got a video that shows you how to make this one, and this tool totally works. The only problem is that it only cuts a single size groove. I made this one with a 3 8 inch chisel as the cutter, and almost as soon as I was finished, I thought, rats, I should have made it with a quarter inch cutter instead. Quarter inch is a much more useful and common size. Then I'd have to make a whole nother one of these to get that size, and then for all the other sizes I want, I might end up making four or five individual grooving planes. That is, that's way too much work. I know you're thinking, okay, forget it. Let's just build a regular traditional plow plane. For sure, but you've got to get the irons, and that's tricky. Making those in the home shop would be a lot. You can see that these irons are, they're complicated. They're all the same width at the top, so they can fit into the plane, but they narrow down to different widths at the bottom. They're also tapered, they're fatter down at the cutting edge, and they have that slit milled into the bottom there. That is, that's a complicated piece of metalwork. I'm sure some people have made them in the home shop, but it's impractical for a lot of people. Now you can buy a set of these, and if you have a set of irons, then I totally do recommend building your own plow plane. Here's a very simple late 18th century plow plane. It's called a wedge arm design because that's how the arms are fixed in place. Very mechanically simple. We could totally make one of these. So maybe you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna buy a set of irons and I'm gonna build a plow plane. That's fine. You can buy a set of irons for around $100. The problem with that is you can also buy a complete plow plane for around $100. So, I mean, I never say this, but I think this is one of the few times where we shouldn't even try to make the tool. I think we should just suck it up and buy one. Now, wooden plow planes like this one still work great. Big factories in America and Great Britain cranked these things out by the thousands, and lots of them are still floating around. I bought this one at a flea market for $35, but of course, it didn't come with the irons. 
If you want a good deal on a plow that you can use right away, then you probably want a modern metallic version. This is the Record 43, and it is the simplest plow that I'm aware of. It's got a main body that holds the cutter, it's got a fence, and a depth stop. The 43 comes with three cutters, an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, and quarter inch. These are small sizes, and they won't do the job for a paneled chest, but they'll handle all your drawer grooving needs and allow you to make some nice panel doors. Depending on the work you do, the 43 might be all you need. Now, those little cutters are tricky to sharpen, but Paul Sellers recommends using a honing guide like this one. It's a good idea, but many of them have a triangular slot to hold chisels, and that does not work well for these square-sided blades. So, I'm going to grab the guide in a screw clamp and use a basic file to make that groove wider and flatter. Then I can grab any cutter I want and set the projection with this little blue doohickey that Craig makes. I thought this thing was dumb when I first got it, but I use it all the time. I will link to all this stuff down in the description. These irons that come with my 43 are used and they're not in good shape, so I'm going to regrind the bevel on some sandpaper and glass. Once I have a square, clean edge, I'll take the whole thing right over to my oil stones to finish the sharpening. These aren't like regular plain irons, they don't have to be perfectly polished, so don't spend all day doing this. Once your irons are sharp, it only takes a minute to set the plane up. The lever cap for this plane is loose. It's held in by friction and tension from that screw. Put the iron in and make sure it's pressed all the way to the right. Then add the cap and tighten it down. Plow planes can take a pretty heavy cut but any plane will choke if the setting is too aggressive. The 43 has no adjuster, so you can move the blade around with your fingers or give it a tap with a narrow hammer. Getting the correct setting isn't very difficult. With any plow, it's easiest to start your groove at the far end of the board. Take a short stroke, move back a bit, and take another stroke. Work your way backwards along the board, taking a slightly longer stroke each time. Any plow plane should have a depth stop, and you can set that to keep yourself from going too deeply. Use your left hand to press the fence firmly against the board, and use your right hand just for pushing the plane forward. Starting at the far end of the board allows the blade to be set for a heavy cut, but still start easily. With this setup, your grooves will come out clean, but they'll also be quick. Now, the 43 does tend to clog. You can see the shavings really packed in there, but you can just take a pencil and poke them out from the far side. It only takes a second and you're back to work. Here's a nicely completed groove. Now, what can we do with it? Well, here's a nice piece of white pine, and I'm just going to use some regular bench planes to turn it into a raised panel. Making panels can be very complicated, but this basic bevel design has a long history, and it works well. I have gauge lines on the front and edge of the board, so I don't overshoot, and this goes very quickly. If you'd like an even more precise fit, you can run a little rabbit on the very edge of the board. I'm basically just messing around here, but I have successfully created a grooved rail and a panel that fits nicely into it, and that panel can still slide around for seasonal movement. This kind of work really isn't complicated, but you do need a plow plane. The 43 is fairly common and not very expensive. I think I paid 80 bucks for mine with all three cutters and everything. These are much more common in Great Britain than America, so if you get one, you might have to eat some shipping costs. But I still think they're a good deal for a very capable little tool. And come on, it's, it's adorable. E even my wife thinks this thing is cute, and she does not care about tools. Now, the 43, for all of its good size, it is limited to fairly narrow grooves. If you want to do larger work, you're going to need a bigger plane. Here's the Record 50. It's bigger and more complicated than the 43, and comes with a big set of irons in various sizes. Looks good, right? Now, using this larger plane is, oh, wait, it, it actually comes with a few more accessories that I forgot to mention. Things like a full set of beading cutters, a tongue and groove cutter, a short set of fence arms, the auxiliary beading depth stop. It's a long story and the specialty mounting bracket that you need to use 1 8 or 3 16 inch cutters. Right, so this is where things get a little bit complicated. Manufacturers realize that once you've built a plow plane, especially a mechanical one, you can just slap other cutters in there and have it do a bunch of other things. For instance, here I am cutting a decorative bead with the Record 50. This plane works really well, and beads appear in lots of places on historical furniture, but companies really tried to pack things in and make these planes do everything conceivable. So in addition to plowing, they also do rabbits, beads, dados, make tongue and groove, and many of them cut decorative moldings.
These are called combination planes, and they actually do a ton of different operations. But that doesn't mean you should buy one of these and count on it to do 50 different tasks in your shop. So here I am using my record 50 to cut a rabbit, and it totally works, but it's not a great experience. Instead of having a sole, like a normal plane, the 50 has a pair of metal skates that support the blade, and they don't slide so nicely. Also, the fence is a little bit short. The whole thing is just clunky. Now, most of this comes down to me, and I just need to learn how to use the tool better. You can add a wooden extension to the fence, rub a little wax on those skates, and generally fiddle with the setup. A little later in the day, I cut a perfect rabbit with this same plane, and it performed beautifully. But each operation with a combination plane generally requires a different setup. It's like a new tool each time. For a lot of these functions, a dedicated tool works better. If I want to cut a rabbit, I would much rather grab my regular old wooden filister plane. I'm doing the same cut on the same piece of wood, but the difference is huge. The filister plane is made to do this one thing, and it does it beautifully, with very little setup time and zero screwing around. It even ejects the chips, and I never have to poke them out with a pencil. Every hand tool woodworker needs a plow plane. And for most of us, the metal combination plane is the most cost-effective way we're going to get there. Now, most of these tools do way more things than you're ever going to use, and some of them don't do those extra things very well. So it's really important to research. You want to buy a combination plane that's known for being good at those core operations, like plowing grooves, and then maybe you want it to cut beads and do tongue and groove. These are things you probably can't do with tools you already own. Rabbits and dados, you can probably do that with stuff you've already got in your toolkit. Now, just by random chance, all of my metal combination planes are record planes, which are way more common in Great Britain. Here in America, where most of my viewers live, Stanley combination planes are much more common. And you know who knows an awful lot about Stanley combination planes? James Wright from the excellent channel Wood by Wright. So James, could you give us a quick rundown of the major models of Stanley combination plane? Well, thank you, Rex. Uh, yes, Stanley did make a lot of different plow planes and combination planes, but mostly it boils down to three, though there are others. Let's take a look at these. First up, you have the Stanley 50. This is a very simple plane. It will do plows, it will do beads. It won't do a lot of the other fancy things, but this will get you for 90% of what you need to do, and it's fairly cost effective. Next up, we have the Stanley 45. This is kind of the mid-range. This will do a lot of different things. 99% of what you need to do, this will do. It'll do all your plowing, it'll do your beating, it'll do several of your coves and other specialties. It won't do a lot of the hollows and rounds, but for 99% of anything you need to do, this will do it. It is a fantastic plane that will treat you all the way along. Then there are those of you with deeper pockets and you want something a little more flashy. That is the Stanley 55. This is the king of hand planes, the greatest of all combination plow planes. This will do everything. It's amazing, but it costs a ton. So in general, most of the time, I'm gonna suggest if you can find a Stanley 50, that's the one to get. They're a little harder to find, but they're cost effective and they will do almost everything you need them to do. If you can't find one of those, then a 45, you're gonna spend a little bit more, but this will do 99% of everything you've ever wanted to do with a plow plane or combination plane. That's why this is probably the most common one because it fits most people. If you have the money and you want something special, the Stanley 55, but it's really, really, really rare I ever have something I need this to do that I can't do with the 45 or the 50. But it does look really cool. Thanks, Rex. Send it back to you. James, right, ladies and gentlemen. The man knows a lot about Stanley combination planes, and he has a million videos about them. I will link to them down in the description. He is a fountain of knowledge on this topic. And that's a good thing, because this is a big topic, and I have barely scratched the surface in this video. The point is, you are probably going to need a plow plane for your hand tool woodworking. You're probably going to need one sooner than you think. But you can also do some research and find one that's going to fit your budget. A lot of the time, you only need a plow plane to do a couple of things. So you don't necessarily have to buy something with a huge, totally complete set of cutters. If you found a Stanley 45 with just the regular straight cutters, well, that would handle all of your plow plane needs, and it would probably be a real bargain. Of course, you might not have the money to buy any plow plane right now, and I totally understand. That's why I made this grooving plane. It is not nearly as good as a professional tool, but it works, and it's gotten me through a bunch of projects right here on this channel. If you'd like to build one of these, of course, I have a video 
and I have a set of plans. And because we love to bundle stuff around here, we are including that grooving plane in our newly revised specialty plane bundle. This is one set of plans that will let you build five specialty tools, including a router plane, a rabbit plane, a spoke shave, and a fully adjustable jointer plane. And because we love bundling things together, we're also including the plans for our Rubo winding sticks, another really useful tool you can make in your own shop out of random scraps. And that plan is included as a special bonus when you buy this plan bundle. Of course, my patrons get all my plans for free. They also get access to a new thing we're doing called the Workbench Sessions. These are a series of exclusive lectures delivered by some of the biggest names in woodworking and craft skills. For instance, this week, tomorrow, we have special guests, the editors of Mortis and Tenon magazine. They are going to give us a live shop tour and do a Q&A just for my patrons. If you'd like to be a part of that, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the workbench sessions and all the other rewards I have for the people who make this content possible. I'll be back next week with another video. I hope everybody is doing great. Thanks for watching.